history of the sport is about to go underway here at Southern National Motorsports Park. Solid Rock Carriers 2022 Thanksgiving Classic. Engines have fired. The field is now pulling away as Kirk Ipock, the owner of Solid Rock Carriers, does so much for short track racing in the southeastern part of the United States. He sponsored some NASCAR Craftsman trucks uh, in the last couple of years. He is on top of the flag stand. He'll be the one to throw the green flag to get this race underway here in the matter of a couple of more couple of more pace and parade laps. Oh, we got one car that has not come uh, come to life down there on the pit lane. So as you see the white truck, that's a solid rock carriers tractor behind it, a per your tank lines tractor and the red one as well. So this uh, this is a a who's who of late model stock car racing and we're getting set to go alongside Kevin Bullock. My name is Alex Hayden. Steve Post is on the pit lane together along with our entire crew ready to bring you the Thanksgiving Classic here at Southern National Motorsports Park. This racetrack, four-tenths of a mile. It is a fast racetrack and provides plenty of opportunities for these drivers. Yeah, no doubt about it, but you've just got to be patient. And we've, we've talked about it all throughout Friday, Saturdays, Sundays coverage as well. So um, we'll take a look here in a couple of minutes at some of the dimensions of this racetrack. And it's not an old, it's not a you know, an ancient facility that's been around since the 40s or the 50s like we're going back to in the modern days. It's a beautiful facility. When people come to this racetrack from other places, they talk about how nice Southern National Motorsports Park is. It's only opened in 1993, of course, here in New Common, North Carolina, four-tenths of a mile, 17-degree turn, seven degrees on the straightaway. There's a transition there between the straightaway and the corners, Alex, to where you really are moving around in that race car. There's some geometry and mathematics involved in that. As you see the skies, some clouds overhead, but the rain has moved on out of here as the flags continue to just lazily drift. 72 degrees as we sit right now on the last Sunday in the month of November. 15 mile per hour wind, the humidity. Yeah, that's something that is just part of living in eastern North Carolina. Yeah, it seems like it's here all the time, doesn't it, as we just show you some shots of the crowd. Let's take a look at some of our past winners of the Thanksgiving Classic. Of course, Josh Berry won this race last year. He took his lumps in this race a year ago because he started up front, had to drop, he fell back to seventh or eighth, and then fought his way back up to the front. Bobby McCarty won this race in 2019. Of course, we were talking about Matt McCall back-to-back -back in 2018 and 2017 in this race. And we are streaming right now on social media for free. SNMPark.tv is on social media through Pit Road TV, through Speed Sport. So if you haven't subscribed to this race and you want to see all 250 laps, now would be the time to do so. We got our free preview going right now. Pace laps are underway, and it's going to be good. This is going to be, this is could be one of the most epic nights in late model stock car history tonight. As the field is lining up two by two, one final look at how they're set to start with Connor Hall winning the pole position in qualifying here yesterday. Josh Berry made it to the championship four in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Back in his roots, back in his comfort zone in a late model stock car. He'll take Dale Earnhardt Jr. as Bass Pro Shops number three from the outside of the front row. The big winner last week at Florence, Brendan Butterbean Queen. He'll start third. Matt McCall, NASCAR Cup Series crew chief for Brad Kesley. Lowski will start fourth. Xfinity Series regular Jeb Burton will go fifth. And Deke McCaskill out of the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Such a legacy driver here at Southern National. Part of the grandstand has been named after Deke McCaskill. And he's so good on long runs. So this type of race really plays into what he's been good at over the years. Jared Fryer rolling off a of seventh. Andrew Grady in that eighth spot. Jonathan Finley ninth. Tristan McKee tenth. Then you get to Logan Clark in eleventh. Dylan Newsom grew up racing here. He starts twelfth. Dean Shiflett's been really good across eastern North Carolina late model racing over the years. Then you got Connor Jones, Doug Barnes, Carson Quapple, Ryan Wilson. I mean, just there's so many names in this race as you see him go through on our graphic. I mean, we've got Stacy Purier starting on the back row. He, he won the pole not too long ago at the Valley Star Credit Union 300 over at the Martinsville Speedway. He is a talented driver, and he'll be one of those that will use his head as Michael Harden will be our 31st starter. But Purier will be one of those drivers to pay close attention to when it's time to put your chips in the middle of the table. 
Clay Jones uh, is one of those drivers that was set to go from uh, his starting spot, but things not necessarily going the way he wants here in these opening laps. Clay Jones won uh, the state championship this year out of Wake County Speedway. Of course, Clay makes his home in Goldsboro, but he has made his way to pit road here as so you get a great shot of this big crowd that's on hand here at Southern National. Not just in the grandstands, but in our luxury suites around the racetrack. It's one of the best we've ever seen here in Lucama, North Carolina. As we, we talked about it, you see it in our shot there. Clay Jones, the 2022 Wake County Speedway track champion on pit road, and hopefully they can get that that car buttoned up and ready to win $50,000 here because he's a threat to win this thing. I mean, so Clay Jones, you've seen the 31 car in the Big Boys Travel Center Chevrolet. That car owned by Wayne Goss kept it uh, right on US 70 in Goldsboro. But this is a, a, a formidable competitor. This is a team and driver that knows this racetrack, knows every inch of the racing surface. As an organization with Clay, he's won a ton of races here. Clay's dad, John Jones, won championships here years and years ago. And obviously, Wayne Goss is a champion here as well in other divisions, the car owner. So good to see Clay get the, the issue buttoned up. And we hear it's a radio issue for Clay Jones, and that has been taken care of, and he'll get his spark back. So you saw wonder on the back of that race car for Clay Jones. They're playing a little post-race concert here at Southern National Motorsports Park tonight. So our, our folks listening in the suite area and around the track, Wonder was supposed to play a pre-race concert, had the weather. So they're doing a little post-race concert after the race for the folks here at Southern National Motorsports Park this afternoon. So we're getting ready to go, Alex Hayden. Field tightening up around this four-tenths mile. One to go, says Brandon Willard. How patient are these guys going to be for $50,000? We're about to find out. We will indeed. Kirk Ipock on top of the flag stand with Brandon and Willard Kirk, the owner of Solid Rock Carriers, he'll be the one to get this race going with the green flag in less than one lap. Field works their way. Pace car lights are out. Mike Bushy will get that car behind the wall and get out of the way. We're set to go racing. 250 laps and $50,000 on the line. Connor Hall shows the inside of the racetrack. He can do that as the pole sitter. He'll put Josh Berry to the top side. Green flag in the air. Waved by Kirk Ipock of Solid Rock Carriers. And here's Connor Hall. Two and a half laps in to the 250 that make it up as the sights and sounds of late model stock car racing at Southern National Motorsports Park are underway. The race leader, pole sitter Connor Hall, he'll show the way. Brendan Queen now will fall in line in the 03 car. He'll ride second right in front of Josh Berry in the gold three car who runs in third. So Jeb Burton slots in to that fourth spot. Then you got Jared Fryer in fifth. Andrew Grady, he's digging on the outside of the racetrack early on, trying to stay ahead of Matt McCall. Battle is on for the lead. Butter Bean Queen to the inside of the racetrack on Connor Hall down the back straightaway. Connor Hall will give him the inside lane. Queen can't quite dive in good enough in turn number three to grab the top spot away. Hall continues to show the bottom. Queen will continue to try to take it away. And you don't want to burn your stuff up here early. We know that Brendan wants to lead the Florence winner from last week. He dove it full speed into turn number three, trying to get a run on the bottom of the racetrack. He'll take the lead away from Connor Hall. Here comes Josh Perry. He wants position number two. Connor Hall stuck on the outside lane. Traditionally not the best way around Southern National. And he'll, for the moment, and have to take his medicine. Gives up the lead. Now we'll give up the number two spot to Josh Berry. And the lane is occupied by Jeb Burton now to the inside of Hall. Yep, NASCAR Xfinity regular son of Ward Burton. Jeb Burton gets through for the third spot. Here comes Jared Fryer, former Cars Tour champion. He's trying to take the fourth spot away from Hall, who's just stuck on the outside of the racetrack. Got to take your lumps. You get moved to the outside lane. But in this case, Hall simply gave the bottom to Brendan Queen in the battle for the race lead. And Hall now is now finding himself racing hard for position number five. 
to Andrew Grady who will take that spot away. We'll see if Hall will get that red and white 77 car back in line and he'll be able to do so in the sixth spot. Queen is the race leader. Just like that, you go from first to outside of the top five. It reminds you of Bristol Motor Speedway back in the old days, Alex, where once you got up there, there was just nothing you could do. It's still that way at Southern National. It really is as these drivers all finding the real estate they need to try to maintain their track position early on as we're 10 laps into the 250 that make up this evening's race in the Solid Rock Carriers Thanksgiving Classic. Good racing all the way around is what you expect at Southern National. We're getting it right now. So Michael Harden just pulled his car into the garage area. We'll keep an eye on that in a couple of moments. Had something happen in post-race. Justin Johnson through on the racetrack now as you see him. Doug Barnes in that battle, but up front. I wonder how aggressive Josh Berry is going to be. A very special paint scheme. Johnny Morrison, Bass Pro Shops coming on board to sponsor Dale Earnhardt Jr. a week ago at Florence Motor Speedway. And he's, you wonder how, just wonder how aggressive he's going to be here early on, Alex. If my math is right, you got, what, 37 laps before the free is gone here. So you see it at the bottom of your screen down there. Log on to www.snmpark.tv to subscribe to see the rest of this $50,000 to win Thanksgiving Classic race. So make sure you log on as we continue to watch the Connor Hall car. That's the 77, the red and white machine on your screen, continuing to drift backwards as Matt McCall begins to close in. You wonder if that's by design to just say, man, we got a long way to go. 14 laps in, 235 to go now with 15 in. And you just wonder, you know, I'll just let these guys go. They're at a faster pace than I want to be at. I plan this out ahead of time. We talked about how um, good a race car Chad Bryant Racing puts together, especially in late model stock cars. We talked about Mason Diaz and how he raced with this team last week. I mean, they know what they're doing. You wonder if this is by design or if he really is struggling that much in that 77 car. Well, time will tell. That is for certain as he can, continues to ride in the number six spot, leading basically that second wave of lead lap cars. That's Matt McCall in the black 51. McCall is seventh. Deke McCaskill behind him is eighth. Jonathan Finley ninth. And Tristan McKee is in position number 10. Let's go to pit lane and Steve Post. Connor Hall just listening to the radio conversation there with his crew and the car is stepping out on him a little bit and he has kind of backed it off when he got shuffled to the outside and didn't want to hustle the car too bad Chad Bryant just came on the radio and said Connor you've got to drive the car straighter off the corner don't get it sideways protect the right rear they feel like they're in a really good spot though Matt McCall is the driver right in line behind him and they know that Matt's a pretty sensible driver so right now Connor Hall in a little bit of a hang on mode as that car is just a little bit free for him here in the early going. Yeah, it's interesting to hear what, what Postman was reporting. Chad Bryant car, keep the car straighter on exit of the turn. It seems somewhat counterintuitive if you're just a logical thinking person. Well, if you're trying to turn a car, how do you keep it straight without hitting the wall? Well, in racing terminology, you simply, it comes off of the way you exit a corner. And that goes all the way back to how you enter the corner. If you can get the car set, kick the right rear out just a bit, you'll be able to drive the car straight off of turn two down the back stretch and off of turn number four to come down the front straight away. It's just simply a technique the drivers have to do, but they can only do that if they're running single file. If you're in a side-by-side -side battle like we see with Finley and McCaskill, it's hard to do that. So why do you do p tell people to do that? Because the right rear tire is so important on these race cars. That's where all your drive off is. So if you abuse that right rear tire, you've got to drive it straighter off off the corner because you can't make that tire overwork itself. As you're talking about it, Matt McCall, Deke McCaskill, racing along with Jonathan Finley, who's got a pretty good record here over the years at Southern National Motorsports Park. Jonathan trying to do it the hard way on the outside of the racetrack. Yeah, he is. He's got that outside lane, and Matt McCall will maintain that spot. This is still racing from 8th, 9th, and 10th on back. McCall in the 51, Finley in the black number four car, working the outside lane downstairs in the 08. That is Deke McCaskill, who is just biding his time right now, riding the tire tracks of Matt McCall. I think that's what everybody's doing right now. you got this top five car breakaway. Then you see the battles that we're watching right now. Finley to the top of McCall, and something happened a moment ago with Josh Berry. 
He was running in the third spot, and he dropped back to fifth. Maybe he just didn't feel like something was right. Let's go downstairs to Steve. Yeah, Josh Berry was just on the radio, and honestly, guys, the pace was too fast for Josh Berry. He was radioing in. He said he's got plenty of space behind those three cars. If you want to just let them go, let them go. We saw that just two laps ago. He hung a left off turn number four. Those three cars raced by, and he can set the pace now that he wants to set because it's nearly a full straightaway back to Connor Hall, who is back in the fifth spot. So strategy here early, saving his race car is the story with Josh Berry and that Bass Pro Shops car as he's dropped back to position number four. So the same type of thing happened last year with Josh, right? He got pinned on the outside in that race last year, had to take his lumps early on in that run, fought his way back up to the top. In this situation, there was a gap that he didn't have in last year's 2021 Thanksgiving Classic. So the smart communication by the team, hey, you've got all this room to work with behind you. If this is too fast for you, then hey, don't worry about it. As you see the top five have really broken away, might be Connor Hall is really stacking up the rest of the race, Alex. Yeah, Connor Hall is the sixth position car leading this second wave of machines in the red and white 77. Finley is right behind him in the four car. Matt McCall is in the 51 in that mix as well. It's worth talking about yet again as we've run 31 laps. If we won 50 consecutive green flag laps, they will put out a caution flag. So to Josh Berry's point, and obviously this battle from sixth on back, no need to really push the button too severely early on as you see the machine going up and off the pace right now. The two car Ryan Wilson having a problem up against the outside wall. There will be a caution thrown, a competition caution if we won 50 consecutive green flag laps. So we're, we're well on that way as we're still showing the Ryan Wilson. He's got fuel spilling out of the back of that car. That's race, that's Sunoco racing fuel spewing all out of the back of that car. It seems like his fuel cell may have busted there. I wonder how in the world that could have happened. Tough break for Ryan Wilson. He is behind the pit lane. Further up, we pick up the next driver that's beginning to make some moves. It's Justin Johnson in that white 81 car. His machine is hooked up and going the front way on the leaderboard. Now, while others are conserving tires, if your car is running, it's like a horse race. If your horse wants to run, let it run and don't hold it back because you can you can cause some damage to your race car by simply trying to hold back. And at some point, you got to see what you got, Alex. I mean, if you get down to 225 into this race, you've got to see how much your car can do. How can you push that car to make it go as fast as possible? Unless you burn it in there for four or five or six laps, you're not going to know what you've got at the end of this race. If you like what you're seeing, you've got about 13 or so laps left of free Thanksgiving Classic. You gotta subscribe. You see it down at the bottom of your screen at snmpark.tv. Challenge change for the top spot. Jared Fryer in the 14, now the new race leader. You saw Andrew Grady in the one car slide underneath Brendan Queen. So Grady will go to second. Brendan Queen is third, and he's got a challenge to his left elbow. Yes, he does, in the form of Jeb Burton out of South Boston, Virginia, trying to find a way around Brendan Queen. Maybe Brendan playing that same strategy of, oh, I don't like this pace right now, or I don't like how something feels in my race car. The sun's gone down now. The track's cooling down. To your point earlier, this is not the conditions that they practice in. Let's send it downstairs to Steve Post. Ryan Wilson is out of his race. Ryan, what put you out here this evening? I guess we ran over something and knocked all the belts off the front of the motor. Um, all of a sudden, going into three, lost power steering, and the temperature just, just completely uh, pegged. Um, so I guess, I don't know, I guess we ran over something on the racetrack. I mean, I didn't see anything, but, I mean, we were just riding. We haven't even gotten quarter throttle yet. Everybody's just riding in a line, and one of those things, we can't do anything about it. Early in the race, what were track conditions? Was the track taking rubber, and, and how was the track as far as that goes? I couldn't really hear you. I think the track was perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything was fine out there. The racing was just, you know, everybody's kind of riding, trying to save tires and kind of see who can make it to the end. And unfortunately, we didn't make it. There we go. That's Ryan Wilson out of it here in the number two car. And you're right, the belts were all out from under the cars. As a matter of fact, he's going back under the hood and taking a look at it. And the belts are off from that car. So tough, tough break for Ryan Wilson. Seven laps to go in the free preview of the Solid Rock Carriers Thanksgiving Classic. 
You're down to seven laps to go, folks. If you want to subscribe, snmpark.tv. You see it on the lower right-hand corner of your screen to find out who's going to pocket $50,000 at the conclusion of 250 laps. We're running out of time with a free trial. Here comes Duke McCaskill to the bottom of the racetrack on Matt McCall. That's a battle for a spot in the top 10. McCall gives way. Here comes that 10 machine. Caden Honeycutt wants a piece of this action in that RNS race cars number 10. Down to now five laps to go. Should we stay green before we see a competition caution as Matt McCall shuffled to the outside lane? That's the black 51. Further up, there's Brendan Queen in the 03. He's got Josh Berry locked to his back bumper. They go underneath Jeff Burton, and here's Berry trying to take another spot. Josh Berry trying to climb back into the top three. He'll do so here. He'll get around Brendan Queen. Jeb Burton will try to follow that gap through. The pace has picked up a little bit here. Alex, right before they know this caution flag is coming. So why not try out what you got right now? Let's see what we really got towards the end of this race. And we've got to try it at some point. This is a good time as any. There is incentive to lead laps here in the Thanksgiving Classic. $100 per lap led. That can equal, if you lead every lap, 25 extra thousand dollars. So there's a lot of money to be held here should you lead laps. And Jared Fryer is taking his turn at the front of the leaderboard right now, as you see him right there in the 14 car, making his way back into turns one and two. Two laps to go before the free trial expires. Here's a challenge and a change for the top spot. Yep, Andrew Brady diving to the bottom of the racetrack in the Gildan machine, takes the lead away with authority from Jared Fryer. So right before we get to this first caution flag of what would be 50 consecutive green flag lap run, Andrew Brady, talk about legacy racers. Dad ran for years and years around these parts, especially here at Southern National Motorsports Park. He says, I want to win stage one of the Thanksgiving Classic. Your free trial just about to expire. Lap 50 goes on the board. You need to get subscribed if you want to see the remaining 200 laps of the Solid Rock Carriers Thanksgiving Classic. Caution flag flies for the first time tonight. This is the competition caution. 50 consecutive green flag laps, and that'll wrap up the free trial. You got to subscribe. Lower right-hand corner is that is where you need to go to subscribe to see who's going to take home the $50,000. First caution flag of the evening here at Southern National Motorsports Park, and we talked about it in pre-race. Anytime you get 50 consecutive green flag laps out of this 250, you're going to get a caution flag. So we thought we would see this in stage one. We did. We saw some comers and goers. We saw some, some guys playing strategy already. This pace is too quick for me, says Josh Berry. Connor Hall struggling with his race car a little bit. So you got some guys that they don't want to hit the go button yet. Then you got guys like Justin Johnson saying, you know, I'm going through the field right now. I'm going to get every starting spot that I can get. So a lot of different layers as there always is in the Thanksgiving classic playing out right now. Well, you talked about Josh Berry saying the pace is too quick. We heard Steve Post